Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. So today, Nadie is getting a few more pieces together for her tire business, and what she needs is a tire changing machine. So today we're going to build Nadie a nice tire changing machine so that she can start mounting and dismounting tires from rims for her tire business. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and begin construction of a tire changing machine for Nadie. Here we have a Harbor Freight tire changing machine, which I think would be very well for Nady's garage because it's simple to build for us as model builders. What you see here is a tube type construction with a couple of C channels down below for legs. Now I'll just break this down. So at the very top, there is a tube with a little handle on it and that handle is used to get the tire off the rim. Just down below it is a little circle with four veins on it that goes into the center of the rim to hold the tire onto this machine here. There is a disc and that's where the rim is going to sit down on and the little pin would go through one of the holes for mounting your tire onto the car. Now down below we also have a tube with a handle on it and the handle has three holes to adjust the brake bar right down below and then the handle in the center is also used to get the tire off the rim and you'd pull the handle off and stick it in the little handle at the very top and then put the bar into the tire and walk around and that pulls the tire off the rim and down below where the feet are you'll notice that one of the legs is longer than the other and it has a little triangular piece on the bottom and that is where the tire is going to sit when you break the bead. And where the uh, bead breaker is, there's three holes. So you can move the bead breaker in and out depending on where the bead of the tire is. Now, in order to reconstruct this Harbor Freight tire changing machine, we need some basic dimensions. So luckily I found these on the internet and they basically show everything you need in order to make this yourself. And what we need to do now is just scale them down into 124 scale. Before we actually begin building the tire changing machine, I thought maybe we should actually get a rim ready. And what I mean by that is drilling out the center hole and then the four bolt holes here, like it would be if you actually dismounted a proper wheel from a car. Now what I have here is different sizes of drills down below and a rim and a wheel back from like my junk box, basically. I think this was a wheel front at one point, but I'm going to remove the junk in the middle and glue this onto the back of this wheel. But before I do that, I want to drill out the center hole and the four or five bolts here. I think this is from the 56 Ford from AMT. And I've got a big drill for in the center and my drill index here with all my little drills in it. If I just open that up, you can see the drills in there. And this lifts up to get at the ones in the back. Basically, this went through the High River Flood, by the way. <laughs> That's why it's so dirty in there. Then I've got my little Zona pin drill. This one has the uh, the pump action spring in there. As you can see, when you compress it, it causes the head to turn. There we go. <laughs> and then I've got the drill with the different chucks in here. Depending on what size of hole you need, you can always take your drill out. You know, that kind of thing. And I'm not sure what the drill sizes are going to be. This one is a 1 8th drill. It should be basically the right size I need. And if not, I've got the reamer tool here that my dad made up, the little wooden handle. And I would drill the hole in here and then use this to open it up by twisting it through. As you can see, it widens up here. It's also flat. So basically like a flat square that's got a taper on it. And that will enlarge the hole. Now the reason why I want to drill a hole into the rim is because we're going to be using this wheel to get the size of that center post for our tire changing machine. And that center post will go through the center of the rim just like it does in the real world. So we need to open up that hole in order for that to happen. Now it's easier to choose the back wheel for this because 
in the front wheel, the center hub goes through, and there is a grease cap on the end of the center hub for the main bearing. But in the back, these just bolt right to the rear axle. So I will start drilling here in the center hole with that 1 8 drill. Oops. And there we go, right through the center. So that opens up the hole. That's a starter hole, but you'll notice there is a bit of a collar in here. And that collar is actually on the drive shaft on the real car. That is to center the wheel. So what I'll do is I'll use the reaming tool here. And we'll just keep going until that collar basically gets out of there. Okay. Okay, so that's obliterated the collar, more or less. And then I can take my number 16 hobby blade, just flatten that out. Now what I'll do is I'll cut off the bolt, and I'll use a little pin point on the end of the hobby blade and just make a little dot in there. And then once I get that, I can take my drill and just drill in because the little dot or the little uh, dent or whatever you want to call it will center the head of the drill. And that'll make it easier to turn the drill into those little holes. So here we have the wheel with the holes drilled in it. And this is the wheel back. I went to uh, cut the center out and that was fine. But then I had to sand this down a little bit. And when that happened, it snapped. But I can always use these pieces as the break for the bead when I go and make up the machine. So here I have three pieces, as you can see. This is our front wheel again from the 56 Ford with the holes drilled out of it. And then here we've got a BF Goodrich tire. This one is really muddy. It survived the high river flood. So I'm going to clean it up with some soap and water because it's really dirty. And then here I've got the wheel back for an AMT 1932 Ford, which accidentally had the center punched out of it. You can still see the little dots in here from the spokes. But I'll clean that up, and then this, I think, is a stronger wheel back. So once I get that cleaned up, I'll glue it onto here, and then make a new wheel for our machine. Now the reason why I've got this tire is because, as you can see, it has the inner walls just like a real tire. So it's the most realistic kind of tire I have next to the Goodyear Polyglass GTs, but they're a little bit too wide to fit on our new hub. Whereas I think this one will do it. And uh, I have to clean the old spider out of here. I can still see that it is there because I probably did this tire when I was a kid. And uh, the flood was in 2013. But I mean, look at how caked on this is. The nice thing is when I clean this up, it'll still have dirt in the tire. So this will look like something that's a bit dirty that is uh, maybe worn out and maybe has to change it. And the reason why I want the sidewalls is because I don't want to actually squish this right perfectly onto the rim. I want to have it a bit off as if Nady's about to pull it over onto the rim. So you'll still need to see that inner bit of the tire. So here we have the wheel ready for Natey to remove with her tire changing tool. Now, here's the thing. So if I pull this up, now you can see the inside of that tire pretty well. And that's what it would look like in reality if uh, you had this on the tire changer. So now let's start to find what types of rods and things we need in order to get into that center hole. And then we can get our plastic ready and start building our tire changing machine. So now that we have the tire all set up and ready to go, we need to get some conversion numbers for our equivalencies in the decimal points when we reduce everything into 124th scale. So here I've got my uncle's Dykes Encyclopedia again, and this is table two, which lists all the decimal places and their fractional equivalences. Now to get our dimensions for our 124 scale tire changer, I made up this little chart using my uncle's Dykes Encyclopedia chart and simple mathematics. So here we have the tire changing machine dimensions in 124 scale. So our first size is 36.25 inches divided by 24, which gives us 1.51, or an inch and a half. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these original dimensions from our illustration and I'm going to remove them and redo our illustration with these dimensions so that we get an understanding of what the tire changer looks like in 124 scale. Now since this tire changer is basically made up of rods and tubes, I have sort of determined that what we need here is evergreen styrene strip rod and tube, and what I have is 1 8 inch rod and 1 8 inch tube. Hello everyone, this is a correction to this video that I discovered actually quite a bit of a ways into filming and creating this piece. What I accidentally did was I am referring to one of the tubes we're going to be using in this video as 1 8 when in fact I discovered it's actually 5 30 seconds was the right one. Somehow I got a 5 30 seconds tube inside the pouch of the 1 8 tube, so I'm going to correct that every time I say 1 8 tube with the proper measured tube in this video. When we actually do use the 1 8 tube, because that's the section I'm filming right now, which you'll see later in the video, I will have this all corrected out. So just bear with me for the next little segment. If everything works out properly, the 1 8 rod should fit in the 1 8 tube. And I might need to just sort of clean up the edge of this. It doesn't really slide in perfectly, but I have been able to get just a little bit of this in. And this is what we will need because on the real thing, the tire slips down the rod, and then there's a little plate in here that we'll have to create, but it will rest on the bigger tube. Now, of course, I will have to cut this to the dimensions and everything, but this is basically what we're looking at. And I did make a little bit of a mistake. I watched a YouTube video on it, but remember there was a tube on the top, and I said that the little bar on it was so that you could get the tire off. That's incorrect. The, what happens is that tube slips on top of the rod and there's a screw sort of thread in there and you screw that tube down and it locks the tire onto the uh, rod. And then the little handle on the top, you use the tool and you stick the tool through the handle on the top and you give it half a turn or so and that tightens the thread down and locks it into place. Then you take your tire changing tool and you run it around the lower part of the rod with one end of the tool underneath the rim and the tire and that gets the tire to pop up and off. So basically that's the way that little rod, or, uh, tube on the top works. Another item that we're going to need to build this tire changer is some C-channel. And I've been looking at my collection of C-channel and comparing it to what this thing actually looks like in the real world. And I do believe that the 532nd C-channel is going to make up the base of our tire changer. And this is Evergreen Styrene Strip number 265. And like I said, the reason why I'm choosing this is because here is our 1 8 pipe. And it looks like it matches, you know, this way with the base of the pipe, which is what it looks like on the actual tire changer. Here I've gathered up the plastic pieces that I'm going to need in order to build our Harbor Freight tire changing machine. Now, so far, this will only get us to build the base of this, not the uh, mechanism for the handle and whatnot. I'm going to need some little strips and that sort of thing, but we'll get to that later in the video. Right now we have a flat plastic sheet and I'm going to cut a little square out of that for the mounting for the tube to the actual frame triangle, or sorry, the T section. And uh, what I have here is the 1 8 rod. Down below I have the 1 8 tube and then I have the 5 30 second C channel. I also have our tire and wheel. And then I've got that broken rim, which I can use a little bit later on for the tire brake for the uh, rim. So I'll just move that out of the way for now. 
So what I noticed with our sketch is that there's only a few dimensions on it and not all of them. So what we have is the height of the, the uh, machine from the bottom of the C channel up the tube and then it stops where the little disc is that the tire sits on. And then there's a second dimension which I had to find out by looking at the handle on the sketch or the tire braking tool and then seeing its height and seeing that it kind of aligned with the height of the um, bar that goes on the top, you know, f through the tire there, and uh, determining it from there, so sort of offhand. And another dimension that I don't see is how long the, <laughs> the actual stand is and where it intersects with the T-sections. So we're going to kind of have to fake it, you know? Guess. I've taken a little bit of time to draw up this little sketch, and this is what it would look like on the ground level. So here we have our C channel, which is right here, coming in at this angle. There is a little triangle off the edge here, and that will go inside the rim, right, and catching along here to hold the rim in place. And that's what's happening when you're breaking the bead the rim will be this far out on that T-section bar. And then here we have our 1 8 rod post coming down. And that's sort of not really central because you've got this long extension, but these three are the same length. And uh, it's just this one piece of the C-channel that is longer. So we need to figure out what this is in uh, like a guesstimate because we don't actually have the measurement. I am thinking it might just be something like an inch and a quarter. Um, but one way to tell is we're going to have to just imagine where that triangle piece is. But it would be about there somewhere. And then we'd have our post coming up about here somewhere. So if we can just figure out those measurements, we should be all right. So let's start off on the base with this strip styrene from Evergreen. This is 291. This is the L angle, and it is 0 0.60 of an inch. So what I'm going to do is cut this out of the bag, get a piece out, and glue it on the edge here of our C-channel, and then cut that off and let it dry. Here we have a little bit of angle that I cut off, and it's a little bit longer than our C-channel. And what I'll do is I'll just glue that to the very edge, and we want the triangle part up. So here we go, or the angle part up. It won't be a triangle till it actually touches the base. <laughs> so I just need to find that. And with my big fingers, glue it into place. Now, again, there is no f hard and firm uh, dimensions going on here. So you're just going to have to kind of judge it by eye. So maybe if we just slide it back to about here, should be okay. So once this dries, I will just cut this so that it is um, the same width as our C-channel. Here we have our C-channel with the angle piece glued on. And this is upside down now, so we can catch the inner part of the rim. So here we've got our tire. And there it is, catching the inner part of the rim. Now, looking at this, I figure that maybe if we go an inch and a quarter and cut it off here, that would be the length of this part of the C-channel. And what we would do then is we would put our tube right at the one inch mark and then we need the little legs that come out here underneath the tube and i think we again we can cut those at a quarter inch each and glue them off the sides and then that should look like what we have for the harbor freight tire changing base so i've cut this at inch and a quarter and i've made a little mark on the inch line but now that i give this a second look compared to our illustration here I think I might have this too far back because here's where the pipe would be. Now, what I'm thinking is if I move this to three quarters of an inch 
and then cut this off again at the inch mark, which would leave me one of the legs that comes out here. I think that would be the more correct distance. So this whole length of this C channel should be an inch, and then you go back a quarter of an inch to get it right. So here we have our base, and these are just loose right now. But what we need to do is take this little offcut of the sheet of styrene and recut it into a square. And then we angle it in. So it's like um, one angle going here, 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 and here, like a diamond. And uh, the reason why they do that is because these are actually separate in the real tire braking machine. And the plate screws all these onto this T-bar. So we need to duplicate the same thing. So I am thinking if we go a little wider than the C-channel, that should give us the right type of square we need in here. So here is the little plate, and I determined that it should be one quarter by one quarter of an inch, and I also rounded the corners. The one quarter seems to be right, because it will touch in here on those little legs. And now, as you can see, everything is separate. So off camera, I'm going to glue this together, and then we'll see what it looks like. And there's our base for the stand for our Harbor Freight tire changer. And there's the little diamond glued in right into the center of all the crosses. Next up, I would just need to glue the 1 8 tube right into the center here. And uh, there is a weld bead that goes around there. Um, Pete has a really cool video on how to do that. But I think in this case, I'm just going to do a big glue blob. <laughs> yeah, I know. But at any rate, now uh, coming up this way, we will be able to have the dimension from the bottom of the C-channel and then up the tube to where we need to cut it to put the rod in at the top and the little disc. Now, another thing that is missing here right now is the little holes in the center of the C-channel on the edges and one just behind that little angle there. And those four holes are to bolt this to a table or the floor or whatever where you're going to be changing your tire. So I need to make those holes. And what I'll do is I will just use my points from the mathematical instrument set. And I will set them, you know, somewhere in here, just back enough. And I will make a little tiny pinhole there and then drill it out with my drill so we get the holes. Here's our base with the mounting holes drilled in, and you can see just how nicely this looks. The three here are all the same distance from the edge, and the only exception is here because of the angle piece, but that is how it really looks. So what I've done here is I've glued the 1 8 rod onto our tire changer right in the center of that diamond, and then once this is dry, I'm going to measure from the bottom of the base and go up one inch and seven sixty-fourths, and then cut our tube off. Here's the base with the tube glued in and cut to the right length. And as you can see, this is starting to really look like the real deal. Next, we can add our little handle in here with the tire brake. And we can also go up and add the disc for mounting the tire on and the little pole in the center. Now, let's just turn this on its side for a minute. There it is on the side, and our tire would go essentially right there. But yeah, this is looking just like what we really want to see in our tire changer. And just bringing back my little sketch right here, there it is. So what I've done here is I've taken my full length 1 8 inch rod and I jammed it into the top of the 1 8 inch tube as far down as it could go. Now what we need to do is measure out 7 16 and that will be from right there up here for that bar that comes out of the top of the tube. So now that that is stuck in there, we can do our 7 16 which should be about here. Now I'll make a better mark, you know, once I can see this with my eyes, because I'm quite a distance away from the camera. But there, 
What I can do now is just chop off this rod and then I can pull it out. I can pull it out like that. That was pretty stiff in there. And then cut this off, add my glue on the end and shove it back in there and it should be the 7 16 that we need. And here we have our base with the tube and now we have our post squashed down in there. And as you can see, it comes up to a perfect 7 16 Now when I was marking it, I actually went 7 8 and then when I could see it up close, I realized I made a mistake, so I just cut it off there. Now another thing I did was I took the rod and stuck it in my drill and just with a bit of sandpaper tapered the edge down on it. I also cut it off with the drill, so I stuck it in, I made the mark on the tube and then turned the drill on and moved my saw back and forth until it sawed through and with it spinning it kept it nice and square. So there we go. Now check this out. What I need to do is make a little disc down below, but just to test this, here's our tire and there it is right on the pole and it doesn't slide down to the bottom or anything. Uh, if I turn this on the side, there it is. So Nady should be able to get this tire on that post. And then the other part of it is another one of these tubes would go down on there and screw in. And there is another little tube with the four veins that stick out. And that goes into some of the wheel holes, the little veins do anyway. And that keeps the tire pinched down onto the stand. So one of the things that I noticed is this is a tight fit in the tube. But if I can get the tube in the drill and then maybe uh, get a round file in there and file it out a bit, I should be able to make something that will slip on and off of that post. Now, in order to make that circular plate that goes on the stand next, I'm going to use my needle points here and the tire itself and this flat sheet of styrene. So I'll just move the styrene out of the way. So what I'll do is, now I don't think this plate is really a specific size. I mean it is, but you know. So I'll take the points and just with one of them sort of in the center of the hub, I'll just maneuver this to where I think it might be best. Maybe maybe about something like that or just a little wider. Let's just go a little wider there. So now I've got that measurement and take my styrene very simply. One of these has a longer little needle head on it. Actually, I got an idea here. I'll take the drill and I'll just drill a little hole somewhere. Hopefully I'm getting it to the right spot. <laughs> Just drill a little hole right here. Now this is the same drill I used for the wheel bolts and it's also the same drill I used for the holes for the uh, mounting. Oops, pinch those together <laughs> when I moved them. All right. Okay, right about there. So, one of these pins is a bit longer, it can go in the hole, and now all I'd need to do is just twirl these around, and I didn't go off the plastic, so that's good, and then that would give me the disc, and then I can cut out the disc. Here we have our cut out circle from the flat sheet of styrene using our points and the hole in the center as a guide. So now we need to enlarge the hole to fit this 1 8 rod. And since I've already drilled the hole previously, I've got something to follow with my larger drill. So now I can easily drill that out, enlarge the hole, and see if I can get it to fit over the 1 8 rod. And now here is our plate, and the hole center is 7 64th. So I used a 7 64th drill, and now we should be able just to take this off of here and slide that perfectly down. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is glue this on. I'm going to stick the end of this post into the drill 
and then I will use my sandpaper as this is spinning and just clean up the rough edge of that circle disc. Here's our little disc after I shaped it in the drill press by spinning it and then I used a file actually to hold it on the edge and get rid of all the rough. Now for some weird reason I started to get like a camshaft lobe effect going on. If you can sort of see the circle has a little bit of a point up front here. What I did was I rotated this around because it was pointing out somewhere weird of course. But I rotated it around to the front and I think I can use that little bit extra right there and uh, drill that hole in at an angle for the pin that's supposed to go in and the pin goes through one of the wheel lug holes in the tire. Now if I just take it off this stand, the reason why I have it on this uh, old spray can is just to get it up a little closer to the camera. But uh, here, look at that. You can drop that tire right there now and that'll hold it on that rack right on that disc. So next we want to make the little top cap here for our tire changing machine. And I'm using that 530 seconds tubing. And uh, that was the tubing that was here. Now the issue is that the rod in here, the 1 8 diameter rod, doesn't really fit inside the inner diameter of that 530 seconds pipe. Because it's just a bit tight. So... You know, I can get it on there, but you can hear it binding, right? We don't want it to bind because we don't want to push that on there and never get it off. So we need to enlarge the hole. And what I have right here is a 764 drill. And I'm going to use my electric drill, put the drill bit in, and just carefully uh, drill in the tube and run this drill down the length of this tube just to open it up so that it can go on and off. Well, that was quite the interesting little task. So now that I've got it done, you can see that, okay, this is the before where it's still tight. But if I just turn the tube over now, this is after the 7 64th drill. And you can see it goes on there nice and easy up and down. Now there was one thing that was kind of bothering me on how to figure out how to do this. If you look at the real tire changing machine, there's a little ring about that high just between the ring and the knife blade and it's got four little fins on it and this whole setup is supposed to go like this so you put the tire on the end here let's turn it this way you put the tire on the end and then you put that little circle thing with the four blades on it you put that down on the shaft there and then you put the top on and you screw it in place and tighten it up. And then you run your little tire iron, you know, you, you sent it in here under the thing and you run around with it, you know, like this sort of thing. <laughs> I'm hitting the camera. Um, but at any rate, we need to make that little disc with the four blades on it. And actually, I had an idea here because we're not really going to be using this tire changing machine to, you know, like in the real world. So instead, what I could do is take that sheet of styrene and just glue little blades on the end of the tube and not cut off the ring, but just have it like the little blades and the tube itself all as one piece. That way I'm not losing that little tiny ring someday, you know, and the thing doesn't look right. The model doesn't look right. So I can just glue these on like rocket fins on the blade. Now these are, of course, not a triangle. They're square or, uh, you know, little, um, little flat blades. So I can just cut a strip off of the styrene sheet into where I think it, the thickness would be and then glue it on. One, two, turn the tube, three, four, just like rocket fins on a model rocket. So here we have the tube with the little four blades attached to it or fins. And now when we put the tire on here, just like that, and Pete, if you're watching, did you notice I did something on this rim? And uh, what that was is I added in the little valve stem right there. That's a wire from a car distributor. But at any rate, okay, so now we've got this with the veins and then that drops down there. 
and fits pretty nicely in the center of that wheel. So next up we need to figure out where to cut the tube off because we don't want it to be 800 miles long in 124 scale. So I do have my little scale ruler here and it's a little bit white or yeah wider at the bottom. It won't go right down in like my blades do. But to me it looks like this is about 24 60 fourths or almost a um, complete millimeter. So what I could do is cut off the tube maybe at 24 if I want it to be pretty much right on the top of the top of the rod there, or one millimeter if you prefer. Or I could go just a bit longer, maybe like 28 60 fourths, something to that effect. So I will cut the tube and then we can put it on the top. So here we have our tire changer and our tire, of course, and the little rod with the veins on the bottom. And now all we need to do is make the little handle that goes on the top. And what I was thinking of doing for that is just using a bit of our C-channel from before and gluing it on the end of the pipe and then cutting it off. So just a little strip of this cut off turn it over and glue it on because then you get that little arch shape that the tool is supposed to go into and then you give it that half turn and it locks it on to the top. So there it is with a little bit of C-channel glued on the top to make that little handle. So let's see if I can pick this up carefully. Glue is still a little sticky. But there you can see that handle up the top. So how does this all work out? Well. There's our stand, there goes our wheel and tire, and now here is the piece de resistance. There. So now, hopefully I can turn this thing like this. And there you have it. How do you like that? All right, so the only thing missing is the little wire coming out of our disc, but that's easily uh, done easily enough. All I need to do is take my fine drill, just drill at an angle, and then use that same wire that I used for the little valve stem, and just stick it in at a bit of an angle. And uh, that goes into one of the little holes for mounting the wheel. I might need to enlarge those holes just to get that wire to go through them. We're talking these holes here, one, two, three, four, five, and uh, that is basically it. So I actually thought of an easy way to get the pin on the stand lined up with one of the holes in our tire. So as you see, what I've done is I've made a little blue line right here. That lines up with the bottom of the base. So if I put my tire and wheel on here, and I look through the little hole, I can turn this until it lines up and I see a blue dot through the hole. And once I get that, I can take my drill and just start a little bit of a drill going in here, pull the tire off, and then re-catch it again, wherever that hole is, with my drill, and then drill the proper angle and get it into the tube down below. And then take my little wire and stick it in there, cut the end of the wire off, and there I've got that little wire that holds on the wheel lug, you know, goes through the wheel lug hole and holds the tire on at the base. So now I have my location pin right on the front of that disc. And how does it actually work? Well, I did have to ream out the holes just a little bit, but check this out. So we got it on there. Just turn it and there it goes. Right through that little hole right there. Now I could actually put another wire in here and just cut it a little bit taller. Maybe I'll do that just so that that little locator pin comes up a little more through, just like the real thing. But there we go with that. So that's how it actually looks from the top on the real, real tire changer. So how do you like this build so far? If you love it, click that subscribe button down below. And if you already are a subscriber, consider clicking the join button and you'll become a member. 
So next up, I can begin building the handle and the brake for breaking the bead when the tire is placed right down here. So that would be the rod coming out of here somewhere with that brake. So now that we have gotten this far with our build, I will be referring to the tubing in the correct numbers down below, whereas before I made that mistake. So now I actually have this straightened out. So we will be using some 1 8 tube from Evergreen Styrene Strip. This is package 224, and we will still be continuing to use the 5 and 532 tube, which is package 225. On our tire changer, I want to use a piece from AMT's 1934 Ford pickup, and that is the actual tire removing tool out of this kit because it comes chrome plated and it is basically the size that we want plus the diameter. Now in the tool section found on the instruction sheet, you'll see these pieces here. They are known as tire irons and you get two of them and they are chrome. And on the Lindbergh version of this kit, they are located here and here beside this big long exhaust stack. There are some other tools like the screwdriver and the wrench and even pair of pliers on here, but we really want to focus on these tire irons. So if we just clip one of them off, we can uh, use that for the handle as well as the actual tire iron on our tire changing machine. So here we have our 1 8 tube and there is one of the chrome tire irons from that 34 Ford pickup. And check this out. It goes right in the tube just like it would in the real tire changer. Perfect fit, a little bit, you know, can slide in and out, but the real one does too. And if you actually need to make one of these, if you don't have the 34 Ford pickup and never intend to buy it, you can always use a very fine rod like this one, which will slip into the end, heat it up and flatten it, and you should get the same result. Now we need to build our handle and mount it onto our tire changer tube, and that will be mounted up into the front here. Now, one thing that I want to do is use H column in order to mount that, because that way the one side of the pipe can be here on this side of the H, and then down here on the opposite side of the H, we can put the 1 8 tube right through the center. Actually, we're going to do something a little different, and I'll tell you what that is. But what we have here for the H column is Evergreen Styrene Strip 284. That is the 1 8 inch H column. And our rods, now I did find out which one went into the 1 8 tube. It is a 1 16 inch rod will go into the 1 8 inch tube. So we've got Evergreen Styrene 222 fitting into 224. Here is the 1 8 tube, and there is that rod. This is the same diameter as those tire irons from the 34 Ford. And there it'll go in. And like I was saying, you can just heat up the end a little bit and squish it together and then shape it. And that would give you that same paddle end on the tire irons. So this is the concept. What we have here is the tube which is going to have the tie iron sticking in the end, and it's going to have to pivot inside the H channel. So if I take a little bit of the rod here and glue it into the end, I can then drill a hole through the rod because that's more solid. Also, this handle, or the 1 8 tube, will not fit into the H channel in the middle but the rod easily will and then the rod will swing up with that handle glued onto the end so what i would need to do is drill a hole through the rod and drill a hole through the h channel and then take a bit of that alternator wire and slip it through both items and then glue it maybe with crazy glue on the ends and uh, make sure that the thing will pivot up and down that's what we want to do. So we will take a bit of this, stick it in the end, glue it, and then we've got something to drill the hole in through. So here we have the H channel with a tiny little hole drilled right there. Now you could go any height, but I tried to get it as close to the end as I could. And then we have our 1 8 tube with a little 1 16th little rod sitting in there. 
and I also drilled a hole into the end of the rod. My camera might have a little trouble focusing here, but basically now all I need is the wire and just put this here and here and slip the wire through all the holes and then clip it off at the edges out here and here. Now I use that same drill that I was using to drill in the little holes on our stand as well as the wire for the little mounting area and for our valve stems. But here I drilled the same hole and I used one of the reamer tools that my dad made. This is a thinner one and I reamed the hole out because this is the operating hole so it just needs to be a little bit bigger than the drill was. But this is the hole that's going to lock the wire in so it does need to be the size of that drill. Here we have the handle for our Harbor Freight tire changing machine and what I did is took that H channel, drilled a hole through it on both sides, made sure it was the right distance off the edge which is enough distance in order to make the handle actually operate like that. So that was quite tricky. I also took our little 1 16th inch rod and drilled a hole in the end and then I had to file it down until I got almost to the touching the top of the hole without like exposing the actual drill, you know, the hole through it off the top, which is what I don't want to do. And I had to round the edges just a little bit in order to make that operate. And then I stuck it into the 1 8th tube and I had to figure out a length for this. And what it looks like in the images is that it's just a bit longer than the bottom bar on the base. So I determined that it was three quarters of an inch long, and that seems to be all right. And like I said, I bent the wire around. So now I just need to find out the location of where to glue the H channel along the side of the front of that post. And it seems to me that the illustration shows this hole being 45 sixty-fourths off the bottom of the base. I think that is correct. Oh, and the other holes I need to do is drill in the three that are down this tube somewhere that correspond with the distance from the bead breaker. Once we make that, that's our last piece actually, is that bead breaker and the three adjusting holes for the bead on the tire down below. But just before I actually glue the handle on, I did another little thing. So I took that same drill right here and I drilled in on the diamond right there, one, two, three, and four. And what I'll do is I found a plastic that's the same as the metal wire and I'm going to cut a little bit and glue them into those holes, one, two, three, four, and then just cut this off slightly taller than the, the uh, plate itself. And that'll make it look like the four bolts that hold this in. Now that is some super fine micro detailing right there. Okay, so now I got real cheeky on here and I pulled out my tap and die set and I found my M3, which is 0 0.05, and that's a thread cutter. And I just put it on the top here, just like on the real thing. So when uh, Nady puts the wheel centering tool on there and tightens it, it's actually now got a proper thread just down about that far in, which should be about right for the tool. Here we have the handle and the base. And I was able to drill the three holes in the handle, but I noticed I had an issue. And this blue line here is also something I discovered. Now, what happened is my printer is currently down and I have that picture with all the dimensions and the resize dimensions in order to build this tire changing machine. And those are up on the computer and I can't print it out and have that sheet down in the basement. So I've been going up and down the stairs this whole time trying to figure everything out. And one thing that I discovered is that this part is too long. This little triangle here is supposed to be right where this little marking is. That's three eighths of an inch coming from the edge of the post outward. And so I also have to cut this a little shorter and that's what this long blue line is. That's where I'm going to cut it off and I will have to get another 
angle, glue it in upside down, and drill a hole just behind it for the mounting holes. That's not much of an issue. The same with the handle. I'll have to uh, figure out how long this now is and then cut this tube a bit shorter. So it is no longer three quarters of an inch. I'm thinking of going a half inch. Here we have the corrected Harbor Freight Tire Changing Machine. And now I've cut that little base down, because remember it was out here a bit. And I don't know if I actually like it shorter. <laughs> I've got the operating handle also cut down to length, but I do believe that the shorter bit is more accurate. Now here I've moved that up to the 4564 right where the wire is. And uh, I'm still not 100% sure because, again, the dimensions, they would have failed. My drafting teacher would have failed whoever did this, uh, you know, the drawings. Because the dimensions come up from the bottom and just shoot out, like, right in here somewhere in, say, 4564. And doesn't really, you know, say to the top of the bolt or whatever else. So the drafting teacher that I had would have fired that guy. <laughs> but at any rate... So now we've got the wheel and tire going into the triangle, and this is really up close to the base. That's what I mean. I don't know if it's quite right. I don't know if I like that. I think I liked it further out more. However, with our dimensions, now the holes actually do line up with where the tire brake is going to be. And all we really need to do now... See, this actually operates. That's the cool part. So all we actually have to do now is get some of those strips, I think I need thinner ones anyway, drill a hole at the top, and then the brake, which we're using this broken up inner wheel, that uh, the rods actually seem to glue right to the brake down here, and they only move on the holes up top, and that would be just to give it a little bit of swing as this is pushing down. So that's all we need to build next. And uh, just like I said, it's really simple. Drill a hole into there at the top and glue it to the side of your uh, wheel. So that would be something like that. Now, before we actually make the tire break, I just wanted to uh, play with this a little bit and show you what it does in action. Now check this out. So here we have our tire, and we'll just put it down here. Now, I probably need two hands. So, got our tire. We just spin it around. Now it's lined up on there. And then we take our little top piece, put it down. The threads actually gave a little tension in here, which is neat. Now I got my tire iron. Okay, now we're just going to pretend that uh, Nady got all the air out of here. Now you get your tire iron and you just put it right in there, bend up. Okay, now I got to hold this. And you pull the iron around the collar. And just, oops. And now we got our tire up. So now what you're supposed to do is get the iron down underneath again to the bottom part of the tire. I can do this. Uh, this is difficult in 125th scale with 1 to 1 scale fingers. But basically, I can't hook this. <laughs> okay, but basically you hook the other part and you walk it around again. And that will pop the tire. Okay, wait a second. Get the iron out from under here. Oh, I'm just pulling this apart now. But yeah, that is the theory. And then the tire will pop off. And there you have it. The final part that we need to build for our Harbor Freight tire machine is the bead breaker. And basically what it is, it's a little handle with the brake on the bottom. And it's screwed onto the pole here in one of the three adjustment holes that we have on the side. Now these holes are made with this little drill, which is also the same diameter as the wire. And what I thought, I was thinking about this all day at work, and in the real one, it's two metal bars, but they're flat. But I was thinking of using C-channel for the plastic one, because maybe it might give a little more strength. 
so that we can actually break the bead of the tire, but I'm not too sure the integrity of this portion of it in plastic. Maybe if it was metal or something it might work. But I've decided to use Evergreen Styrene Channel, C-Channel, and this is number 262. So what I need to do is just drill a little hole at the top on each side, get a little piece of my wire, slip it through the one hole, and then glue this break onto the bottom. And I need to cut this in order to fit in between the two that are coming down the side. Now the whole height here is a half inch, but that also includes the break on the bottom. So this I cut at one half inch, but it's a little bit of a false pretext because the break has to actually come up. The real one looks a little bit different than what I'm going to make. But I will still try to get this together and see what it looks like. So here I've created our little tire brake. And I used the two C channels on the side. And I cut down that wheel rim just to look like this sort of thing. And I also added in a little bit of that 1 16th rod right in the center. Because it seemed really flimsy on this end. And the rod would just keep this parallel and keep this all at the right angles. So I also had to enlarge the holes with the reamer tool and I'm going to put this wire through the hole on the handle here, the first hole, and the other two are just sort of decoration holes because I'll never adjust this thing. But uh, I will slide that through. Basically what I do is Put this in position, line up the first hole, push the wire through, have the wire go through the hole on the rod here, and then out this other little hole here, and then I can clip it a little bit off the ends just so that it looks like those bolts. And I don't think this thing will spread apart and fall off in any way, shape, or form. And if I cut the rod, or the wire, pardon me, close enough inside the C-channel, it shouldn't push out. So hopefully that will all work. So now we have the bead breaker installed and I'm leaving the wire long so I can pull it out afterwards with my tweezers or pliers because basically what I want to do is I want to paint it with this tester's 1103 gloss red which is the basic kind of red that this thing comes in. And here I also have my tire iron. So now I'm really eager to test. I don't know if this is going to break the bead. Just because this is a model car tire, it's not an actual real tire. But we would put the uh, the tire iron in there. Okay, let's lift this up as so high as we can get it. Now we need to put the tire in underneath. Okay, come here. All right, tire in place. The bead breaker is not in the right spot. Oop, I think I'm going to break the bead breaker. <laughs> okay, get the tire there. Yeah, it's not going to work, but we'll just assume that it does. <laughs> All right, it's not quite as... Uh, workable. Okay, hold on. I don't know. Yeah, it's not going to work, but we assume that it works because it's just a 125th scale model. It does look pretty accurate to it, though. It looks like it would want to work. Now, I'll move the camera so we can get a side view of this, but I will paint it up and then maybe we'll take a look at the side view once we present it to Nady. Here's our Harbor Freight tire changer after we ended up painting everything. And there's a nice red. I also put a little bit of steel with a little black wash up here just to show the threads off. And this actually operates. But yeah, you can see the tire brakes swinging away. I did get a little bit of paint underneath here, so it's a little bit stiff on the uh, handle. And there is our wheel rim, all nicely painted with that nice yellow. And it's semi-gloss black on the back and on the inside. I also have the tire iron right here and the tire. So I do think that Natie will like this once she gets it in her shop. 
I would also like to thank Mad Ginger Customs for answering questions that I had on the Harbor Freight Tire Changer because they own a real one and they actually modified it to uh, make putting on the tires a bit easier with a special rig for the top. And uh, again, thank you for helping me out with this thing. And I hope you can get a lot of my viewers to check out your channel where they actually do some customizing on a nice old Ford. Here's Nady in her shop for the three week biggest tire sale of the year and week number two. And she's all set to do a ton of changes with that new Harbor Freight tire changing machine. And boy, oh boy, is she ever up for a good work order this week as she's got about 45 cars to do. And she might need a little bit of help, but we'll see what happens in the future. Now, one thing that is coming up is Nady's tire balancing machine. And that'll be a video coming up soon on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode where we got to build Natey, that wonderful little tire changing machine, using some of the parts from the AMT 1934 Ford pickup truck kit, like the tire irons. Now, if you want to see some more of the uh, videos that I made for Natey's Garage, check out this one right here. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the Monster Hobbies online. That's our web store where we sell great model car kits and everything else by clicking this icon down here. And until next time, everyone, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.